The last uh, video lecture is going to have to do with what tools are available to evaluate prospects to see whether they make good sense. We're going to work with this tool. Uh, I'm going to explain it to you in the video. We're going to work with this tool in class, and you can expect uh, the opportunity, quote unquote, the opportunity to work with this tool when you take the last exam. So very important tool. It, it's very important. It's also very simple. Uh, there are two things going on in this spreadsheet. One is, is that they are uh, modeling cash flows and uh, from those cash flows, computing some key financial uh, statistics that people use. And the second is <clears throat> they're simply using some formulas in Excel to estimate the oil that will be recovered from the well. So I'm going to give you a quick tour of the spreadsheet, but again, I expect that you're going to spend some time playing around and understanding all this. So the very top of the spreadsheet, top left corner, uh, very simply talks about uh, what did I get in terms of product? What price did I receive? That translates to money. And then I take money out in terms of taxes, operating expenses. I consider my net investment. <coughs> this calculates my cash flow. And then it tells you what the 9% uh, discount is. I'll talk about this more later. Continuing across the top, <coughs> excuse me, gets into more of the financial calculations. And I encourage you to play around on the spreadsheet and just click into to, to fields and see what the formulas look like. What I also encourage you to do is save a copy of this program before you mess with it um, so that uh, you, you, even if you goof something up, you can always go back. Of course, it's always there on D2L for you to download as well. So here is just flowing out the cash. Once the cash is flowed out, then the rest of this thing over here is financial calculations. This yellow box is where we tell the spreadsheet what to do. And so what this is doing is it's saying, what's the initial uh, oil rate that I expect the well to make? And what's the final? That'll tell, that basically that's defining when is this well no longer economic. Obviously, that would be a function of the uh, operating expenses in the out years. Um, gas oil ratio, they're saying, is there any gas associated with this oil? In this case, uh, it's just an estimate. So this is kind of saying basically it's a, a six to one ratio, about six times the amount of BTUs are coming from oil as they are from natural gas. And then this is the decline rate. This is uh, simply modeling a, a way to model the decline curves. Um, this is 30%, and you can change that to any number you want. Uh, obviously, you would like that to be scientifically driven, so to speak. Um, then you tell the price, which obviously is a known. What do you think is going to happen to prices in the future? Again, Excel, very simple. It can either increase at a linear rate or decrease at a linear rate. You can set a maximum. Uh, you can do the same for gas prices. Then you can enter into your lease operating expenses. And again, what do you think is going to happen to those operating expenses over time? You can say what percentage of the well that you have. And uh, the net interest is basically saying we're going to assume that I've got a fifth royalty on this. So we have 100% of the working interest. We have 80% of the well. The other 20% obviously goes to the royalty holder. And then you can see it's already calculating your life down here based on uh, how long is it going to be economic. As we continue down on the spreadsheet, you can see uh, when the spreadsheet was built, I honestly have not updated them. It told you what the various tax rates were in each of the states. Interesting how much variation there is. Notice that Louisiana is significantly higher than many other states. That Montana, it varies by zone. New Mexico is pretty high. And then you down here in Texas, a little bit lower. So you want to know what contributes to break-even rates and plays? Right here you have some information because uh, you see that the tax rates are different. Then you get into some, uh, this is where in theory it's showing the decline rates. It's a logarithmic scale. So even though it looks uh, linear, it's really kind of that shape if it was not on a logarithmic scale. 
We're going to talk more about this in class. What metric do you use? But this is just some overall nice numbers. It says this thing's going to make a little over half a million uh, barrels of oil. As the leaseholder, you're, that's going to be your take, likewise in the gas. And it's computed here. This is the life expectancy. And you can see it's just doing an economic calculation uh, in that cell. Then this gets into the time value of money. Uh, hopefully you're pretty strong on this concept. I'm going to briefly explain it, but if you don't understand the time value of money and what's happening here, there's any number of YouTube videos that you can look at to talk about uh, internal rates of return, present values, discount rates, any of those topics. And, and simply what this, this number reflects is what do I think the time value of money or the cost of money is. Notice that if my cumulative net discount is zero, the present value of my well is exactly what my cash flow is. So I'm going to supposedly net a cumulative cash flow of $10.3 million. But the cost of funds is not zero and or my expectations for return are not zero. And because of that, we see various figures. If I expect a 5% return on my uh money, then my pre the present value of this well is $8 million. You can see even if my expectation is a 30% return on this well, it's $3.8 million. Every company is going to have a different what they call hurdle rate. How good does this investment have to get to make me want to do it? So um, <clears throat> you can see right now, Wow, even if I'm looking for a 30% annual, I'd want to do this well because it's very simple. As long as the discount value is pre or the present value is greater than zero, and that's my desired return, <clears throat> then I should do the well. Well, this is not very hard. <coughs> Excuse me to change. <coughs> Let's assume instead of coming in at 500 barrels, the well comes in at 200 barrels and everything else stays the same. Well, if I come over here, you can see, wow, this thing doesn't never makes any money. So obviously, the all of the, these present values are, are negative. Well, let's let the well make some money. Let's make this 300 barrels instead. Now what this is saying is that I'm going to net out a total of $2.6 million in cash. And if I want a 5% return, it's still positive. If I want a 10% return, it's still positive, all the way up to 20%. But if my hurdle rate is 25 or 30%, it's saying this investment won't make it. This is not good enough. And I can get the same uh, sort of sensitivities here if I raise the, inter the operating expenses to $15,000 a month. Then you can see, wow, here my switchover is 15 to 20. Uh, if my hurdle rate is around 17, 18%, I would choose to do this well. But if it's higher than that, I would not choose to do this well. We're going to play with this a lot more in class, but I encourage you to take an hour or so to play with this to get a sense of the sensitivities of these different columns. Uh, and just change all these uh, variables. So you get a feeling for what really is going to move the results. Uh, and then when we come to class, we're going to see how we can use even a very simple tool like this to do some pretty sophisticated modeling. And then we're also going to look at some online tools that are very high cost, high cost databases that could help us with this problem as well. So let's come to class and talk money.